It's an epidemic that is killing Oklahomans, one that the state has largely ignored until just recently. We are talking about mental illness, and for the next half hour, Fox 25 investigates Phil Cross and Maria Garcia are taking us behind the headlines and digging into the heart of Oklahoma's mental health crisis. It's tonight's Fox 25 investigates special report. Mental illness is not a new issue in Oklahoma, and there have been attempts to bring mental health to the forefront in the past. But in the past year, one tragedy really hit home. It was the turning point that showed the problems with mental health can no longer be ignored. We actually met at church. It was the day after Christmas. It was December 26th. That was the beginning of Mark and Kathy Costello's lifelong love story the start of a family that would grow to include five children. I loved being a parent. I loved being a mother. Her second oldest, Christian. Christian was probably, of my five children, the most obedient, uh, gentle, uh, sweetest, most tender-hearted, uh, introspective of the five children. There were no real warning signs until his late teen years, when Christian got sick. It was scary. But I thought, well, we've got to do everything we can to help him feel good, feel balanced, have a normal life. Christian's illness was in his brain, schizophrenia. We were very quiet about our son's mental illness because we didn't know how people would take that. It didn't stay that way. Mark would go on to become an advocate for mental health awareness. The Costellos joined support groups, but Christian's illness was winning especially when he turned away from the medication that helped regulate his brain chemicals. Mark had been meeting with Christian every two weeks to visit with him. It was just such a meeting on August 23rd, 2015. Mark and Kathy went to dinner with their son. They were dropping him off at a Brahms restaurant when Christian asked to speak with his father alone. It was probably not more than a minute later that uh, Mark was at my window and he had slammed his hands on the side of the, the window where the passenger seat is. And I looked up and he was covered in blood. There was blood, begging, chasing. And then Kathy held her husband in her arms as he died. I said the Hail Mary because at the end of the Hail Mary it says pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Mark Costello's death became a rallying cry. As his body lay in the state capitol, the reality of mental illness hit home. Because of these tragic reasons, the dialogue has really shifted and people are really understanding, we, hey, we have to treat these things. Terry White, the commissioner for the Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services, says Costello's death was one very high profile wake up call about the need to address and treat mental illness. None of us want to lose one more Oklahoman as a result of these issues. Kathy has now taken her very personal tragedy public turning to advocacy for new laws and more support for the mental health system. Making Mark's death matter helps, but it doesn't take the emptiness away. I cry every day. I still do. In fact, I would say I'm in more pain now than I was earlier. In some ways, Kathy sees her husband as a martyr. And as she continues to speak out, she hears other stories, other Oklahomans who are trying to find ways to cope with mental illness in their own families working to remove the stigma and secrecy of diseases that are treatable before it's too late. And through the pain has come purpose. Kathy is now a committed mental health advocate, and she says she wants to do whatever it takes to avoid another tragedy. And only months after Mark Costello's death, there has already been new mental health legislation. This new law allows for certain people suffering from mental illness to be court ordered to take their medication. Kathy Costello says she believes that if this legislation had been in place nine months ago, her husband would still be alive because Christian would have had the help he needed to stay on his medication. A family member can request for an, an, another adult family member to be court ordered to take their medication if several requirements are met, and that includes multiple hospitalizations, problems with the law, or threats of violence. If left untreated, mental illness does not stay at home or hidden away. That's right, and cutting costs for treatment may end up costing us all even more money than the state may be saving. Coming up on this Fox 25 Investigate special, what taxpayers end up paying when their taxes are taken away from mental health programs. 
While we may recognize mental health is a problem, the state is also in a budget crisis. But what happens when mental health funds are cut and does it really save the state any money? And one of those concerns with mental health issues is how closely tied it is to the topic of substance abuse. The United States Surgeon General recently toured one of Oklahoma's treatment facilities. Dr. Vivek Murthy was in Oklahoma as part of his work to address the country's ongoing battle against prescription drug and opioid abuses. Part of the tour included meeting families who have lost loved ones and even talking to people who are going through the treatment while trying to address the issues that led to addiction. We know that Oklahoma ranks among the highest in the nation when it comes to overdose deaths. But there's a silver lining here because people have started to pull together to fashion solutions. And Oklahoma is one of the states uh, that is doing that and working hard to do that. Mental health and substance abuse workers say the two issues are often intertwined and both suffer when services are cut in an effort to save the state money. But does it really save money or does cutting prevention programs just pass that burden down the line? It is a common concern from nearly every police department and sheriff's office in the state. What to do with the mentally ill because the cost of not funding programs is adding up and putting public safety at risk. Throughout Oklahoma, resources for just about anything are stretched thin these days, but few see the effects as clear as the men and women on the front lines of mental health. We don't want to put people that's got mental health problems in jail, mm -hmm. but right now that's all we can do. Sheriff Ron Lockhart's responsibility is the safety of Sequoia County, but more and more his deputies are being called upon to deal with the mentally ill. What I see, and, and it, it's sad, the legislatures are not funding mental health with the right funding to get the job done. Sheriff Lockhart says when deputies have to take a call about mental health, it can mean hours stuck at a hospital and hours more transporting someone to a long-term care bed. The sheriff's office only gets reimbursed for mileage. I've seen where my deputies have had to sit for 20 hours waiting for them to be evaluated waiting for them to be transported, and then, of course, then if there's a bed, a bed available. But even if someone ends up on a 72-hour hold, Lockhart says cuts to reimbursement for care providers means those providers often can't afford to keep the people they've brought in. You can't tell me that the system's working when you have people like that that we know needs help, but then they turn them loose because there's no funding, and five hours later, he's dead. I know that that's going to negatively impact law enforcement. We're going to have to pick up a bigger role in that. Captain Jeff Pierce is the crisis intervention team commander with Oklahoma City Police Department. He has seen mental health calls to police steadily increase. At last year, in year calendar year 2015, uh, we had over 13,000 mental health related calls that our officers responded to. Oklahoma City Police had to make 144 trips out of the metro to find treatment beds for the mentally ill last year which means 144 times at least two police officers were taken off the streets. And it significantly impacts the manpower of the Oklahoma City Police Department without a doubt. Both Pierce and Lockhart say every time the state cuts funding to mental health, their agencies pick up the costs through increased transports or increased crime. So taxpayers are still paying for mental health, but instead of paying for treatment, we're paying through the courts, jails, and sometimes through innocent lives. To have good working community mental health treatment options in a community saves so much money to taxpayers in the long run. If you're looking for good news here, there isn't much. Maybe it will get better, or maybe it won't. Either way, the thin blue line of law enforcement will still be there as the last line of defense in the battle against mental illness. It's often said the county jail is the largest mental health treatment facility in the state. Now, obviously, that's not the purpose of a jail. And in fact, many jail facilities in the state don't even have a full-time mental health professional on staff. There has been some progress, according to mental health advocates, in the growth of mental health courts as a diversion to jail. But more work still needs to be done. That is especially true in rural Oklahoma. Coming up, we're taking you to a part of the state where the mental health crisis is killing more people per capita than anywhere else in Oklahoma. The reasons why and what's being done to stop it next on this Fox 25 Investigates special. Oklahomans are dying, and the reason why is something that we don't like to talk about. That's right, it's suicide. It's the number one cause of violent death in Oklahoma. But why us, and can anything be done to stop it? 
It is that part of Oklahoma where the red dirt touches the Lone Star. An area built on the pioneer spirit, a community where neighbors look out for each other, even when your nearest neighbor is nowhere in view. Whenever we interview people, we, we like to say we're 45 minutes from the, local, the nearest Walmart. Rick Garrison is the superintendent of Cheyenne Public Schools, which is in the heart of Roger Mills County. We still take care of our own. The idea of community is strong in Oklahoma, but even still, there's only so much neighbors can do for each other. When you're this far out, there's just not a lot of those type of resources available for our for our patrons and for our community. When you look at the numbers, Roger Mills County sits in the middle of the stretch of counties that have the highest suicide rates in the state. In these sparsely populated communities, every death is felt by nearly everyone. It has an incredible impact on our school, our students. Um, I'm sure they have family members in the school, in the community. Um, even if you didn't know them personally, you felt like you knew them. Whitney Moore is the Cheyenne Middle School and High School principal. She's helped implement the district's wellness calendar, which now focuses not just on physical health, but also on mental health as they try to bridge the gap in services lacking in these rural communities. When I did have cases where I needed someone to come in and talk to my kids and do counseling, it was incredibly difficult. I do think that there's a very strong fear of being known or being exposed in a small town. Savannah Kalman is the prevention program manager for the Oklahoma Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. She says there has historically been a stigma surrounding mental health, which keeps many from treatment. But that stigma is beginning to fade with education. When Oklahomans are kind of educated about the similarities between brain diseases and the physical um, illnesses that we're more familiar with, they jump right on board. What makes suicide prevention difficult is there's no one real cause for why people choose it. We can't just have one solution because there are many things that cause people to become hopeless. Kalman relies on research to help direct the limited state resources to counties and cities where it can do the most good. A new reporting program with emergency rooms is aimed at collecting data on attempted suicides, which Kalman hopes will help the targeted response even more. We can save lives if we can join together um, to face some of these very serious concerns that we have facing us. It is very important that if you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, there is help. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available by calling 1-800-273-TALK or 1-800-273-8255. If you call that line, you'll be connected to other Oklahomans who are there to help. You can also call 211 to get information about where mental health services are available in your area. Because even though there are major cuts to services, help is still available. Coming up on Fox 25 investigates the impact the budget cuts are having and how professionals are working to make sure that there is still help available for those who need it. One of the highest rates of mental illness in the nation. That means Oklahomans are suffering more than any other state, but funding to help them remains at an all time low. Even with that limited funding, the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services has managed to make some gains, but there are still hundreds of thousands of people not getting help, and it's because there is no money to help them. Hit with major cuts this year, $22.8 million gone in mental health funding, and these dollars lost could turn into lives lost. It's talked about all the time, and I don't understand why there's not more people listening to that. I just don't get it. Verna Faust is the head of Red Rock Behavioral Health. The company contracts with the state to offer mental illness treatment. Funding's been historically low for mental health services, but the state did manage to build a safety net for those most in need. What's coming is terrifying. What's coming is that if something doesn't happen, the whole safety net is going to collapse. Mardell King Hawkins says the state sponsored programs at Red Rock and NAMI saved her life. The things that I, I needed to become who I am today, they pay for it, and I, I couldn't be here today if it wasn't for them. Mardell had a rough start, abused as a girl and often left alone to care for her siblings. As an adult, a doctor told her she had depression, panic attacks, anxiety disorder and PTSD. But her diagnosis felt like relief. It's not what I'm doing on purpose. It's not what I'm doing uh, intentionally. It, I have a mental disorder, so was, I was like, I was so happy. Now she works at a clinic helping others like her. Seeing the programs that saved her life cut 
is painful. I'm afraid people are going to suffer. These cuts may feel deeper in rural communities like Altus, where finding help could mean an hours long drive. If we don't help people, if we don't give them access to the services they need for mental health or for substance abuse treatment, uh, we see that show up in the criminal justice system. 73,000 Oklahoma families have had their services limited this year as a result of recent cuts. We're running out of time and something needs to be done and this has got to be figured out. And if it's not figured out, it is going to be catastrophic for our system. Limiting services does not stop people from getting sick. And advocates say more cuts will mean more people suffering, more people in jail, and an increase in suicides. It is important to know that you can and still should reach out for help. Often organizations will help find another program if they can't help you themselves. That's right. And something you can do right now is call 211. On the other end, you will find someone to listen 24 hours a day, and they are experts on helping Oklahomans in crisis. Next on this Fox 25 special report, hope. Advocates say it's necessary to hold on to the hope of overcoming this mental health crisis. How they do it in the face of insurmountable odds. Oklahoma's mental health epidemic is coming out of the shadows. Tragedy and advocacy have pushed it into the light. Fox 25 Investigates has been exploring this issue for over a year. Now we are at the start of a new uphill battle caused by the state's billion dollar shortfall. But we want to close tonight's special with hope. How advocates keep hope alive in the face of devastating budget cuts. One in four people in Oklahoma are suffering. Mental illness is taking over their minds and not everyone is getting help, but it doesn't have to be that way. For those who do develop the disease, treatment works if you can get in the door. Mental illness is preventable. And in the face of services being cut, Commissioner Terry White says people should still reach out for help. The system that exists in Oklahoma to treat mental illness and addiction, we can be incredibly proud of. If people can get in the door, the outcomes are fantastic. The dilemma is when we only let one out of every three people in the door, that's where the trouble is. Mental health services have been underfunded in Oklahoma for nearly 100 years. But in the last few years, the state has made some slow but important progress, like less suicides and more people asking for help. But financial shortfalls are causing the state to take steps back. My fear is that not only is it devastating to families, and devastating to our economy and devastating to our culture, I think that you could have another tragedy. Tragedy is still fresh in Kathy Costello's mind. Devastation catapulted the wife and mother into mental health advocacy. Kathy's son, Christian, suffers from mental illness, and during a time he was refusing treatment, he attacked his father. Kathy held her husband, Mark Costello, as he died. I'm just one person that can share my story. And so when I look at it, what I think of is lift the stigma, educate people, and advocate. The pain may never go away, but neither will her hope for a stronger Oklahoma that can help everyone suffering from mental illness. My husband had hope. I'm going to carry that hope on. And so you'll find people like Kathy Costello and Commissioner Terry White walking the halls of the Capitol, reminding legislators that mental health services matter. There's hope if we choose to go after this. You know, things, anything worthwhile in life doesn't come easily. Right now, there is a push for Medicaid rebalancing in Oklahoma. It is a complicated plan, but several of the advocates you heard from tonight say that it's the only plan on the table. The health care authority describes it as a way to stop ongoing cuts to Medicaid. And many people who suffer from mental illness often find themselves in economic need. And this plan is a proposed solution to help those in need get health services. I'm Maria Garcia. And I'm Phil Cross. Thank you for joining us on this inside look at Oklahoma's mental health crisis. And that's all the time we have for this Fox 25 Investigate special report, but there is much more to do about Oklahoma's mental health crisis. And to learn more about this topic or to find ways to connect to resources for yourself or for a loved one, just head to our website. We've put links to a number of services. This is all at OKCFox.com.